okay 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 how you guys doing what's up what's up what's up what's going on this is buster recap how's it going guys i'm silver gray all right cool we actually made it and now i'm killing the sound because i'm still working on all that other stuff hopefully we're not sounding like a bunch of chipmunks um because I haven't quite started doing the whole sound check thing and all that stuff. And according to what I can see over here, buggity boo, buggity buggity boo, I am now center frame. I've been doing a whole bunch of other stuff to make sure that, um, you know, to make sure that <coughs> the video quality is better and the sound quality is better and the better, better, betters and the betters on the betters. So that is what I am doing. And as I said before, I am Solar Gray, the cinematic sorcerer. Hey, what's going on? And of course, I am here today to entertain you and to tell you about all the stuff that we have been doing. And I got to turn the monitor on and all that jazz. But I am not the only one that is here with us today. I am here, of course, with my good friend. Hey, license hand share. Hi, everybody. Oh, man. Yeah, you were all you were all low. Like you were all like, look at that. So what I'm doing here is something that's created during pre-production so remember kids oh yep 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 so remember uh go ahead and say something here i'm just giving you a quick adjustment all right yep okay well while you get me in the frame i uh, hope everyone's doing okay out there in uh twitch land yeah and uh you can't say tv land for 21st century no <laughs> no tv was that <laughs> i haven't watched broadcast television in like five years Mr. Technology. <laughs> yeah, well, I was an early adopter of TiVo because, you know, I, I loved not having to care when the show was on. It just magically happened. And then about a year ago, I just wound up getting rid of uh, cable completely because it turns out I was only watching Netflix and streaming services. I, like, never watch broadcast television. So okay, that yeah. saved about 100 bucks a month on a cable bill I didn't want and I didn't need. Nice. Holy crap. Yeah, that's some good stuff. And of course, um, we are here, we are on, we are doing the thing, and believe it or not, we are on time. So <laughs> I tried <coughs> I tried um, doing a weird experiment, and that's just broadcasting and letting the normal emails um, go out, and <laughs> that wasn't working. <laughs> and when I say just letting the normal emails go out, I mean, um, I mean um, not doing the not doing the hashtag thing, not doing the Twitter thing and all that stuff. And guess what? It don't work. <laughs> it don't work. So now I know that. And how do I know that doing all that stuff and keeping up on my pints and quarts actually does work? Because we've got the deck mob in today. They're here. I would say bright and early, but it's late afternoon. So what's going on? Hashtag NP City. Hashtag deck mob. All right. That's cool. So I have said hello to everyone that I can say hello to. Mm -hmm. Hello to you. Hello, hello. You know, and hello to the deck mob and um, hello to you. Uh, I'm talking. No, no, not you. You're, you're, you're in the chat. You're good. But I'm talking to you ghosters and you lurkers and all that stuff out there. I get it. I totally get it. Um, you know, I totally get that you might just want to listen or you just might want to watch and you don't want us calling you out by name or anything like that. I totally, I'm totally with that. But just know that I'm happy that you're here. And we got so much stuff coming down the dock. Um, you need to, you know, just give me my natural skin tone and make me out of rubber because I am tired, 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 <laughs> tired. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, that's right. We talked about dad jokes yesterday on Game Gallery. Oh, is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we're yeah. doing. We should still have dad jokes hanging over. Don't get me started. Yeah, no, 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 no. Because no. again, <laughs> dad jokes. We don't care if you think they're funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, so we got a lot of stuff. Um, I am working on and planning on launching the Patreon today. Like when you go home, mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish up launching the Patreon. I've been nice. recording the intro video and the thank you video, and we're doing the editing and the color correction and boo -boo 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 -boo, all that jazz. So yeah, that's um that's what I've been doing just today and working on the archive because um ooh uh, that's right, boom, you missed the dad jokes, <laughs> but it's okay, it's okay because as long as there's a dad, there's gonna be jokes. 
um, that make that should be used in a torture chamber. Ask Matt Groening. He can tell you. Because <laughs> I told you, my wife used to think I played too much golf. So I, I, found, a, I found a good compromise. Blink, blink. I got a new wife. Anyway. <laughs> oh, shut up. You were quiet, you. Um, but, yeah. So, um, you know, launching the Patreon. I've been putting stuff up on the YouTube as far as the archive goes. I've been re-editing all the old stuff. And, yeah, we, we it, it's been, let's just say I miss things like sleep <laughs> and friends um, been game testing some other stuff so that we can get the battle reports going mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. But I had a sad Saturday. Oh, mm -hmm. what happened? Hmm? What happened? Well, there is a group on Facebook, or more to the point, the group on Facebook chat called Weekly One Shots. And so far, I've got like 15 to 20 people in, and sadly, nobody was able to play. Mm. So I couldn't have my show of a weekly one shot. Um, because there was no one to play with. Mm. And I could have done like an individual video or something, but I didn't want to be one of those sad pandas going, well, since nobody was here to play with me, I guess you guys can be entertained while I play a board game with myself and I make all the funny voices. <laughs> like, I'm going to play hero clicks with Deadpool versus Black Panther so I can keep saying things like vibranium, you know. <laughs> But yeah, so. <laughs> but yeah, but I don't know if that would come off as comedic or sad. sad. <laughs> but remember, tragedy is when I cut my finger. Comedy is when you fall down an open sewer grate and die. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how that quote works, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. So when you're suffering, I think it's funny. Yeah. Therefore, by the transitive property of mathematics, when I'm suffering, they think it's funny. <laughs> So you guys tell me, if um, if I don't get somebody in, would you guys like to watch me um, sit around and play games alone? <laughs> I'm not going to say the other term that that is. And while you guys sit in the chat and say, wow, what a sad panda. You're a 40-year-old man. Go out there and make friends. Learn how to dance. Go to bars. Meet people. Or <laughs> would you guys actually like to watch me learn games by myself? It's up I to don't, you. I don't know. Making friends these days is hard. You just can't get the parts. Not enough ice cream for the Prozac. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, uh, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. And of course, NP City is going off. And yes, in Wakanda, the manhole covers are made from vibranium because they're just that kind of ballers. Which makes me wonder if if Wakandans were Americans, would they have vibranium spinning rims? Yeah, it's it's a tough question, isn't it? The answer <laughs> is no. They yeah. wouldn't. Because yeah. they wouldn't have wheels on their vehicles. <laughs> I don't That's know. just so quaint. Okay, so maybe they would have spinners on their hover cars. Yes. Okay, but either way, if that is the case, then you guys can feel free to chime in with those comments at backinthedeck at gmail.com. You can also check out our archive and stuff and start that discussion in the comments section on YouTube. Just look for Bid P and have the discussions that are known on YouTube for being so well thought out, balanced, rational, and courteous. And you can also talk to us on Twitter at back in the deck and of course join the join the facebook group deckers on the book um if you guys are like us and you spend a lot of time in traffic because we are in beautiful southern sunny california sorry beautiful sunny southern california not in the san fernando valley because there are things to do there no we're in south bay um then don't watch us right now matter of fact i'm guessing some of you guys are at work that's cool i would say put us on your phone and listen to us and if you like the stuff that we have done in the past or want to hear more check out soundcloud slash big p and that's where you get audio of all of our shows which is yours to keep for free forever and of course follow us on instagram so you'll know when we're about to start broadcasting because that's some fun stuff anyways it um so yeah other than that there has been um week has just been my week it has been so filled with work so filled with other stuff um 
I just I don't even know where to start. So I'm just gonna ask you, how was your week? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, I had a I was uh, Saturday. I had a good Saturday because I had all the robots working. Mm-hmm. So I had uh, the CNC printer running. Sorry, the CNC machine running. 3D printer running. The resin printer running. The washing machine running. The dishwasher running. And I mowed the lawn. Well, ain't we just fancy? <laughs> well, just Mr. Fancy Pants and all of your beep boop beep beep booping robots. Yep. I, I put all the robots to work and then, like I said, I mowed the lawn. So I felt good because that was all stuff that I've been meaning to do all week long and I knocked it out in one day. <laughs> and then um, uh, we got to, we went down to Naples and looked at the Christmas lights. So that's always something we do this time of year. That's kind of nice. Okay. Um, people Wait, you didn't call me for the Christmas lights? You, I thought you had your show. Well, you didn't have your show. So you didn't have your yeah, exactly. Exactly. Always reach out, man. I'm an extrovert <laughs> surrounded by introverts. It's crazy. <laughs> uh, crazy. And then uh, Sunday Sunday was weird because Sunday I had a whole bunch of plans that didn't wind up happening, although I felt didn't feel bad about it because I did so much on Saturday. Uh, uh, sadly, I had one of my carbs go south because I'm having problems with the CNC, and I'm like, ugh, uh, okay, I'm going to have to rethink that because I was planning on making Christmas gifts this weekend. Well, this week, because this weekend is Christmas. But, uh, you know, so it's like, I got to figure that out. And then, uh, uh, so I wound up hanging out over at uh, Stickman's house for a little bit. Oh. Came home. I must have just missed you. And realized I left my phone at his house. So later on, I went back over to his house, and I'm like, well, since I'm coming back over, it seems stupid to drive all the way over, get my phone, and leave again. I'm like, maybe we can watch a movie or something. And I wound up watching this show called Happy. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get to that. Yeah. Um, although, you leaving your phone and your CNC robot falling apart, they covered that in um, Death Note. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. I think it was called Justice. Um, oh, sorry. Wrong camera. Justice. All right. That's better. Yeah. All of your robots beep, boop, and beep, and then, then they fall apart on you. <laughs> oh, sorry. Sorry. I shouldn't be laughing that hard out loud. <laughs> you know. But yeah, I spent some time with Stigman. He helped me do some. Um, he did some. Um, he helped me do some. Some game testing mm-hmm. on the stuff for the say that word, and I say, of course Patton Oswalt has a magic ingredient for it in the eyes of a hardcore detective, like, I don't know if it, it he's like, he's not a detective, he's a bad cop turned mob assassin, so he's a bad cop turned yeah. worse, yes, yeah. <laughs> no one is likable in this show, every, it's like watching, it's kind of like Payback meets, meets Roger Rabbit, meets shoot 'em up, yeah, Okay, I, I have to put shoot him up in there because I thought Clive and, Owen was the angriest and, man alive. And the best part through all of this is Stickman going, and the thing is Stickman going, the thing is, if they just played this stro- show straight, it would have been an awesome show. If, if his sidekick wasn't an imaginary unicorn fairy thing, it still would be an awesome show. I agree. I completely agree. <laughs> and then agree. you have his little Roger Rabbit character, and you're just like, this is surreal. Especially since, judging by the amount of head trauma he takes in the first two episodes, <laughs> the entire thing literally could be on the station. <laughs> After, like, the third car crash in, in, in 24 hours, you are a really bad driver. <laughs> yeah, I just felt bad for the poor paramedics from the pilot. <laughs> He's going, I need this medication now. Wait, wait, I'm shooting at an imaginary friend. And the poor EMTs are like, he's waving a gun and we can't stop. And he just filled me with 20 cc's of adrenaline right to my neck. Woo! <laughs> Hope my heart doesn't explode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is. Yeah, yeah and uh, the uh, yeah. the other part is when they, they show the accidents. You, the audience, don't see the accident coming. He'll be driving and then suddenly he's flying through the air. Graceful <laughs> and peaceful while shattered glass drifts around him. And uh, sick man's roommate's like, have you ever been in a car accident? It's kind of like that. Yeah. Because you don't see it coming. You're just suddenly like, why am I floating? Well. And then you land. Well, you don't see it coming. <laughs> I see. The slow motion starts as soon as the impact happens. Because every time I've gotten into a car accident, and every time I've like my motorcycles have gone down, mm-hmm. it's always it's never like, wait, why am I rolling on the side of the road? It's more like, yep. 
first time I went, I, I went down while riding a motorcycle. It really was. Okay, all right, all right. Yep, there's no recovering from this. Gloves, check. Helmet, check. Goggles, check. Mermaid, -er, mermaid, -er, mermaid. And, you know, fortunately, I wasn't hurt. My bike still worked. And I didn't know that I, I stopped sliding five feet from a 30 foot drop off of a cliff. Oh, magic. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> That's a, good, that's a good stopping point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I could say, well, a better stopping point wouldn't have been going down, but a worse one would have kept going. Yeah. You know, but yeah, so when I'm in car accidents, I'm like, ah, it's about to happen again. But after being hit by cars like 30 or 40 times over the course of my life, it's just one of those things where, how can I put it? You ever have a bully at school? You see him coming, and you just know. <laughs> you no. just oh, never well, had that. Oh well, yeah. There comes a point where things happen so often. <coughs> it's Elton John's song. I've seen that movie too. Mm. Or um, the Carpenters. We've only just begun. Starts playing. And it's <laughs> like here we go. You know. Well, uh, I should have packed a lunch. You know, I I, I have that side with bar fights too. Ah. You know, so, so that's why I stopped playing music at bars. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. But yeah, but we'll talk about Happy eventually. If they want us to cover Happy on this show, we'll cover Happy. But yeah, I, I know, Boom. I know. <laughs> anyway, um, so let's get into it because we got some thick stuff. We mm -hmm. got a whole lot of thick stuff to go to. So, of course, you're covering. Dear God, I just. Okay, yeah. I gotta have better posture. I might have to get one of those roast things from, from a chair. I don't want to sit on the edge like I'm going but you know. Um, but what I will say is um, this, this, you know, we're at episode four yeah. on both of our shows. Now, just to recap, previously on Buster Recap, <coughs> we talked about episode three where they both go on a spirit quest in the spirit world or in each other's spirit world. Yeah, that's the weird part. They see each other's spirit world. And uh, it is, yeah, pretty messed up. Yeah. And so now, um, and again, the show ended at a great point where she goes to her church, he's sitting there, and it's like, we got to talk. Talk, bit. <laughs> hey, bit, we got to talk. Love you, love you, Snickers. Um, <laughs> That's right. That's a stolen joke. I am proud. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forget the name of this episode. I looked it up a minute ago and, and uh, for immediately forgot it. But um, this episode resumes with them having, we have to have a conversation. She's like, and, and uh, she's like, how did you find me? And so, well, I saw this church on a, uh, on a voodoo tour <laughs> and then I saw it again. And well, he's, he's, he's trying to explain to her his vision and, She's kind of she's kind of ribbing him about it, and they, they actually sit down, they have a conversation, and unfortunately, the show gets a little disjointed because as they're having the conversation, they cut out to scenes from their lives, mm -hmm. and it's unclear whether these are flashbacks or flash forwards. Mm -hmm. So you don't know whether these things are happening after the conversation or before or before the conversation, but. Um, uh, but the, they, this episode is an episode of, uh, ugh, I don't have the right words. So I want to say transition. Well, they basically, they stop screwing we around. We can say evolution. Evolution. That's the word. That's a good word for it. Because they, they, they stop screwing around and start becoming who they're going to be. Uh, the first thing that Tandy does is she goes home, but she doesn't break into the house. <laughs> She knocks she shows on the up with coffee. she shows up with coffee and knocks on the front door and mom's like, oh, it's the first time because she's been going home all along and breaking <laughs> in when mom's either not there or passed out. Of course, mom then immediately pours a fifth of Jack into her coffee, which shows that yeah, mom's still a mess. And they well, you know baby steps, yeah. baby steps. She brings the coffee. That's a step that's forward. Step, yeah. You know exactly. Mom, then we're drinking the coffee clean and not chasing it with Jack Daniels and pills. Yeah. We'll burn that bridge yeah. when and, we get and there. And she's there to talk about Roxanne Corp and her dad. Mm -hmm. And um, 
she kind of falls back into the old mentality. Mom's like, I know, I know, you say it's a waste of time. And she's like, no, no, I, I really do want to help. She can't help falling back into the old argument, but she's trying. You can kind of see that. Mm -hmm. And then she also falls back in the old argument of your, your, your boyfriend, he's a married guy. You've done this so many times. We both know it never works out. You know, we, I want to help, but this guy is just like all the others. And she's like, no, he's different. And she's like, yeah, right. And, and then like, we, yeah, the last five are yeah. different, Mom. And <laughs> then he shows up. He shows up like, no, he's different. And he shows up. I brought groceries, which is like the first. <laughs> and it's like, what? what? No, 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 no. See, you can't be, you can't be different. Like yeah. she said, you're different, so that means you're the same. You can't be doing this good stuff. <laughs> yeah, because as the comment is, because the earlier comment was, he's just a guy who's into you because he likes your ass, and then he shows up with groceries and makes dinner, which is something. No, it is a nice booty. It is, yeah. You yeah. know, yeah, but say. the uh, he's the first guy. It's obvious from the reaction. He's the first guy who's ever done that. They're yeah. like, what? He bought <laughs> groceries. He's like, yeah. Why is that weird? <laughs> and uh, then we cut back to go back to the conversation. Uh, uh, in my head, I'm a little vague because we keep cutting back and forth so much. Mm -hmm. What happens when? Uh, but uh, Tandy's then talking about her power, how she can see people's hopes. And well, actually, I think Ty brings it up first. And he says, I, I, he sees their fears and their darkness. She says, no, I think I see their, their hopes. And she says, isn't that ironic? Because I'm the girl without hope. And, uh, and then it cuts to her like in the kitchen with the, with the guy. And she's like, oh. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna prove this guy's a scuzzball because I'm gonna touch him and see his hopes and see what he really wants from my mom, and she touches him and it's the same exact scene playing out. He wants to he be sees in. family. <laughs> he's, he's like, it's we're like, making dinner. He's, this is exactly what I hope for. <laughs> yeah, he's exact. It's exactly what's happening. Only she's watching herself not be uh, adversarial to him and the, the mother coming up and going, "Hey, baby," and he's she's <laughs> like. This is really what he wants, like right now. Like, <laughs> oh, I totally misread the situation. I don't want to react to that. Well, you got to understand. See, she's a teenager, and when a teenager is proven incorrect, um, weird things happen. Like, wait, I'm supposed to be right about this because I'm a teenager and I'm so busy knowing everything that I don't have anything that I need to learn. Yeah. Uh, so she starts to cut him a little slack, and uh, she actually then goes to his law office and is like, I'm here to help. And he's like, okay, I can use all the help I can get. <laughs> and then he like, so he starts cleaning up some stuff. He takes away the files he's not using and puts them in a giant old-fashioned gun safe he has in the closet of his little craptacular uh, law office, which looks like it was originally like a dry cleaners or something, because it's got mm -hmm. this huge plate glass window where you can see everything going on in the office from yeah. from the street. You're kind of expecting to see Bob Odenkirk there, yeah. going, "Hey, better call Saul." And, and yeah, it's kind of funny because she looks at the safe like, "Oh, he has a safe," because she just kind of does that casing thing, mm -hmm. and I'm like, "Oh, well, that's going to come up later. She'll probably try breaking into it and find out what he's really up to or whatever." And um. Uh, she actually has some good ideas because he's like he's telling him about how the uh, the Roxanne cop guys are 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 really dirty, how they're uh, blaming her father for all their stuff because he's dead and he can't defend himself, and how they're using the company to funnel all their illegal private finances for, mm -hmm. through. And um, she's like, and she has brilliant because she's used to dealing with rich douchebags. <laughs> That's her mo. Because so she goes, oh, she's like, oh yeah, I know the type. And she goes, we should check their fa their Instagram and s all their social media posts because uh, boys love their toys and they're probably showing off their stuff. And, they're all, and he's like, ooh, that's a good idea. I didn't think about that. And then she makes a comment like, so you're gonna, do I get a desk or should we just work on the floor? <laughs> now that's funny because I'm going to flash forward a little bit. Later on in the episode, you see them working on paperwork on the floor of his office because he doesn't have a second desk. And there's a lot of paperwork. And there's a <laughs> lot of paperwork. So, you know, they're doing kind of that that crazy uh, uh, serial killer wall straight thing, but on the floor. And um, then we cut back to Ty, and uh, she's like, you need to get into the precinct and, like, follow up on your cop because your power keeps – because he's talking about his power to teleport. Mm-hmm. And he doesn't understand it. He can't control it. It just happens. And she says, yeah, but it keeps taking you to that cop, and it keeps taking you to me. It takes you where you, to things you need to see. 
So you and it keeps you from doing things really stupid. Yes, you know. Well, she didn't get that piece of information because <laughs> she she he didn't explain that it prevented him from making a really bad choice. And uh, the uh, so she's like, you should you should like, and and she's initially trying to subtly tell him like, your plan didn't work. You need to try a different approach. So instead of just like trying to take vengeance on this guy. Find out about him. Find out who he is because she's – look, she's a con person. She's mm-hmm. like, know your marks. So she's telling him, you need to find out about him. You need to find out who he is, what he's doing, you know, and then and then, like, and then what? We'll first find out and see what you can use. Right. Step one, go down to the precinct. And he's like, I can't go in there. Look, uh, uh, if I go in there, they're going to th- treat me like – they're just going to see a thug. It's the South. And plus, he's also got, like, major issues because the cops killed his brother. And I'm really glad they brought that part up because it was like, okay, you know, you're looking at the black kid who has the middle class class life thing and all that jazz. But, yeah, they do make make it the point like, um, this is still the South. This is still a black person dealing with the police. And in the most liberal of places, black people living, like, dealing with the police does not go over well most of the time. Yeah. And it's like, no, they're the police. I'm black. And, oh, yeah, we are in the Bible Belt. <laughs> yeah. You know? And she's like, point. Still. <laughs> yeah, because she's what her point is, is then change the scenario. The best lie is the one you ring in truth. And as she's ex- – so then it becomes like a voiceover of her telling him how to set up the con. Yeah, the whole, the whole like, baseline to Ocean's Eleven is playing in yeah. the background. You yeah, know? and he's he, – so he, like – he, he, he goes out, he locks his bike up with a bike chain, then he pulls out some bolt cutters, cuts the bike chain, and steals his own bike, takes a picture of the broken bike chain, then, like, rides over and throws the bike out over the overpass, like, and I'm like, oh, and you can tell that, he was like, he was not happy about it, because it's like, I have to steal my own bike, and I'm like, ah, <laughs> yeah. That was a really nice bike, too. Yeah. That was yeah, a really nice bike. And uh, so, uh, I'm just shades of Peter Herman playing in the back of <laughs> my mind. My bike, yeah. my bike. Yeah. You know. So, uh, so he does that, and then he goes into the pl- he goes into the precinct, and he's standing at the at the window to get buzzed in, and the cops yelling at someone on the phone. He's like, "What?" He goes, uh, "Someone stole my bike." He's like, Ugh, "Okay, come on in. You so and so will get it." And then you look at the precinct, and the precinct is so white. <laughs> it's aggressively white. Yes. <laughs> They've got like because the the one cop is your generic kind of like uh, white dude. Then you probably they have the the Italian cop. They have and then they have the uh, the redhead cop taking his thing. He's like the rookie. He's like, oh, I got to get up and get a form. And they just see him sitting there looking around, looking at the precinct. And it's yeah, it's nothing. It's it's aggressively white, and he's getting more and more nervous. And you can tell he's having an anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. And I'm thinking, ooh, is he gonna teleport? Is he going to teleport right now? And he's just getting more and more freaked out. And finally, he's like, I can't do this. And he leaves. Yeah. He's got to get up and go. He's, he's got to get up and go. He's, he's, you can tell he's, he's about to. He's, he's, he, he, he leaves. He's about to lose it. He's about what to lose doing. it. Yeah. And he goes home. And the dad's like, I was. Because he, he snapped at his mom. He was like, I got things to do. And he took off. And he's like, later on, his dad's like, I was so. It's okay. I was angry. I was in a mood this morning. In fact, after you left, I was in such a mood. I decided I was going to take that door off the hinges. So I went out to my tool shed. And see, that is a very black thing, okay? It is, um, like, I don't know if this happens in suburbia and stuff like that, but when black parents get pissed, they don't tend to say, you're grounded, okay? I mean, being on punishment, as we call it, is very much a cultural thing. Like, yeah, okay, yeah, no, you're, you're, you're definitely on punishment. All your privileges, you're gone. But you also lose your privacy. And that is a, that is a huge thing because it's very much... Um, I guess you can call it a resonance from from slave culture. Mm-hmm. Um, it's one of those, you are my child, I own you. Everything you have, I control because it's mine. It, it's what was it? Um, the old saying that my mom used to say is, what's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. And even if you earn the money to buy it for yourself, it's mine because it's in my house. So taking the doors off the hinges is kind of saying the privacy or the right to privacy that you think you have, it's not a right. It's a privilege that I grant you, Mm. you know, 
All right. So, yeah. So he's like, while I was out there, I noticed my bolt cutters were missing. You didn't know anything about that. And he's like, no, dad. And I went, oh, he's lying to his dad. That's a bad call. And dad gets pissed off because he knows he's lying. Grabs his backpack. And he's like, you can't look at my backpack. Pulls out and he pulls the bolt cutters. My first thought when he saw him pull the bolt cutters out of the backpack, I'm like, you walked into the precinct with the bolt cutters in your backpack talking about a stolen bike. Are you an idiot? <laughs> yes. He's 16. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he gets caught with the bolt and dad's like, dad, dad's had it. This is dad's breaking point. And dad is so mad. He's not even mad. He's like, <laughs> he's like, and that, that, you know, you're in trouble. Yeah. Right. Cause he just looks at him and goes, let's go. And the kid's like, what, what? Yeah, it, it's, it's very much that. Boy, I ought to. Okay, you're still good, but it's like, let's go. Get in the car. Yeah, and it's like, time and I'm, it's like the whole time it's like, is, is he gonna kill me? What? This is weird. Dad's not saying anything. And, and keep in mind, they're in the south. Yeah, <laughs> so it could be. Well, I, I got, I tried, son. Now, mm-hmm. I gotta take you out. And then I got to lay it down with your mother so I can make another one that looks just like you. And we'll do it right with him. <laughs> yeah. Cause it, it, he's, he, he, so he's like, he's and, and his dad goes, don't talk unless they talk to you first. And he's mm. like, oh, 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 okay, what's going on? Dad's not explaining nothing. Nope. So then he goes and they goes over to the house and it's like a big, it's like a bar, uh, a backyard barbecue, bunch of old dudes, Playing jazz, laughing, barbecuing, and now you know once you pull up there, you are in for it. Yeah, <laughs> because well, because old black men playing jazz, jazz, having a barbecue, and in congregating together. Yeah. yeah, you're. Let's just say there's a reason that they lived to be old. Yes, <laughs> and my as soon as I saw that, I my my what instantly popped my head is like, okay. He's he's the dad has recognized what's happening. He, they, the, the boy is no longer a boy. And now it's time to take him to the elders to teach him how to be a man. Step one, you don't talk to these men unless they talk to you first. You show respect. And I'm like, OK, so now he's going to like take the guy and show him what it's going to be. So let, let's see how this plays out. And then he walks up. Now, this part I didn't get, and I'm mm. assuming anyone in the South would get it because it seems that it's very much a New Orleans thing. I will explain it after you're done yeah. talking about the South. But then then he walks up, and he comes up, and it's like it's like a scene from every old Western. Like, the music stops. The barbecuing stops. Everyone stops and looks at him like, what? oh, no, what is this? Mm-hmm. And then he takes this aggressive. It takes this aggressive stance. It's almost like a. It's almost like it's a challenging, almost like a dance stance. Mm-hmm. And he starts singing in this Creole pigeon. Mm-hmm. And at first, I'm like, is he singing j- jazz? And I was like, no, he's declaring who he is, who he comes from, where he is, and what he wants to be. He's like declaring his 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 his, his uh, title and deeds to these men, and they're just looking at him like, nope. <laughs> and then the oldest of them comes out and is like, nope, nope, I, uh, you you ran away. I don't know who you are. And then walks up and he goes, I should kill you myself. And he pulls out a straight laser and goes, like, cut his throat. And he pulls it because he, he doesn't flinch, he doesn't move. And he goes, my hand wasn't shaking so much. <laughs> and then they have a conversation and then he's accepted back. And he's like, you've been away too long. He's been too long. What happened to you? And they kind of see that he's got the boy with him, so they, they you get the impression that they like, oh, they know what's up, but this is how it's done. And uh, then he takes the son in and he starts introducing him to the house, and it's actually like a, a clubhouse of some kind. Okay. And it's some it's a it's it's a it's definitely a social group. Okay. Because uh, um, they've been established like from you know that stuff. Let me explain. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> it is not a southern thing. It is specifically a Nolens thing. See, back um, during the old-timey slave days, Mm -hmm. there were various Native American tribes that rescued slaves and said, you are part of our tribe now. You are not a slave. You're you're not an American. You are one of us. I think it was like Chita, uh, Seminole, and Mm -hmm. a, a lot of those southern things. So they passed the traditions down over the years, and it's a very big New Orleans thing where you have the black Indians and they are Native Americans, but they're not Native because they're African. Mm. But um, 
they have the ceremony that happens. So over the course of the year, the Indians of New Orleans, they put together their ceremonial outfits, thus all the beating in the mm-hmm. scene, and they parade through New Orleans on um, Mardi Gras, and whichever chief, and they have their they have their positions. There's the chief of the tribe. There's, um, as you found out in the episode, the dad was the spy boy. Mm-hmm. He was the one that his whole purpose was to leave the tribe to see what's out there and to bring back news. And um, that's the position given to the people that have that adventurous heart. Um, And um, one of the, again, one of the huge things that came down through that is it has been passed down. Um, The show Treme that comes from the makers of The Wire Mm -hmm. focus a lot on the Indians. Um, If you guys are wondering why I'm not pulling up footage, um, the footage computer kind of died. I'm not sure if it overheated or something, but it's time I got a new one, so I'm rebooting that. But yeah, um, in a few, I'll be pulling up pictures Mm -hmm. of Indians. But over the course of the entire year, they put together their outfits um, and they have their ritual dances and their ritual talks um, to say, like, this is who we are. This is who I claim to be, which is why when he got up there and it was like, oh, well, he leaves, you know, he left the tribe to go all uptown with all that hoity toity stuff. And, yeah. you know, he ain't my boy. My boy wouldn't wear them shoes, blah, 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 blah. And it's like the whole fact that he didn't flinch and all that stuff shows that he still has warrior spirit. Mm-hmm. And he knows that the chief wouldn't kill him. Or if the chief decided to cut his throat, there must have been a reason. Yeah. And um, and the conversation that he has with Ty in this in mm-hmm. this con- in this show is one of the best father son moments I've seen on TV for a while. Yeah. But you haven't gotten to that part of the episode. But just to um, just to illustrate um, what they were doing and essentially think about it like a holy fraternity, like the Masons or something. Like yeah, that. that was that was the impression I got, and, and, and even seeing, it, I assumed it was a Mardi, it was definitely a part of Mardi Gras because of the beadwork and because of the flags they had on the walls and the photos. Yeah, uh, like one of the flags said, I think it was like established like 1886 or something like yeah. that. It was when their group was established when in, in the city. Well, it was it was when that tribe right. was, was established, established in the city. city, but they were going back like the Indians. And the slaves, or the Native Americans and the slave relationship, goes back to before the Louisiana Purchase. Yeah, and um, and this is like this is a big part of American history, because it's like, you know, twelve years a slave. Well, if we could get out of Alabama and make it over to like New Orleans or mm-hmm. um, somewhere in Louisiana, then there might actually be a shot. You know, so that's that's a real thing. Yeah. And uh, then the dad's explaining the beadwork to him, and they're like, you make a new one of these every year? And he goes, you're a new man every year. And he's telling about the beadwork. I have to be very careful when you, each bead belongs in a specific place, and if you do it wrong, you might have to undo, undo hours, days, or weeks. Sometimes months. And he goes, well, sometimes people don't. He, he, well, how do people stand? He goes, sometimes they don't. That room over there is full of all kinds of failed stories. And so Ty, and Ty goes walking around, and he's checking the place out and the the old the the chief comes over and talks to him and he asks the chief because the chief starts talking to him so he asks the chief what's a spy boy and the chief tells him what the spy boy is the spy boy his job was to 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 run a run far afield and to find spy out trouble so we know what's coming Mm -hmm. and as he's describing it you see ty getting this look on his face and he's like but that's what i've been doing (laughs) and i've been Going places and spying out trouble, like he is, he is the. You're like when he's saying, saying that the narrative is tight or anything. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, we got some footage here. Sorry, you guys on SoundCloud, but yeah, we got some footage of you know all of these, like all of these outfits are handmade over the course of the year, and um, <clears throat> that is what they spend their time doing. Um, they spend their time doing beadwork, learning the songs, and importantly. The youngsters now have seven or eight fathers <laughs> that yeah. they have to answer to. So it's like dad is kind of having a bit of a trouble. He needs backup. So mm-hmm. now he's got all these old hardcore elders 
to help keep his son in in line. Yeah, I mean that that's kind of the and well, more importantly, he's no longer a boy; he's becoming a man. He's learned what it means to, to be a life. man. Yes, and w- this is where you learn. Yeah, from the elders who d- who survived, mm-hmm. and um, so Ty goes wandering through the back room and looking at all the old outfits. And he's walking around, and he's looking at all the outfits, and he sees one, and he's like, "What's that?" And he's like, "That's the one." And he's like, "That's." He's like drawn to it, and it's it's this deep purple cloak with like black beading on it. And he's like, "Oh, this seems right." And you're like, <laughs> "I'm like, oh, he's getting his costume." Yep, he's getting yeah, his yeah. costume, <laughs> and it's and it's a fantastic. Like, if a cosplayer is out there and going do it, I'm going, y'all do the thing, because it is a fantastically done like cosplay. Yeah, because it's almost um, inch per inch exactly the cloak from the comics. Cool. I see. I don't know what the comic cloak looks like, so so he brings oh, we'll it. Fix that. Yeah. <laughs> so he brings it out, and he's so he brings it out, and he starts messing with it. His dad's like, "Where'd you get that? Why are you doing that?" And he's like, "I I I just thought I'd take one of the failed ones and you know make it right." And he goes, "Well, and dad's like really upset." And he's like, "Who told you to do that?" And he goes, "No one." And he's like, "Why did you pick that one?" And he goes, "I don't know. It just called to me." And, and dad's like, oh, well, that was your brother's. And he's like, kind of, whoa. Like, like, uh, like, yeah, doggy doggy, what now? What? And then he's <laughs> like, you know what? I'm going to finish it for him. And dad's like, okay. Yeah, uh, we got a little footage here. And yeah, that's, that right there is what they look like. Again, something that I planned on cosplaying with the girlfriend eventually, but, you know, I put on a little weight. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah. And I think, yeah, I think we're able to pull up at least a shot of the cloak that they pull up. Um, <coughs> not quite a spoiler because it's just showing, you know, what we normally see. But, yeah, we've got that going. <laughs> and, yeah. So yeah, the that's work a, is all fantastic. That bee, yeah, the bee work you know, is insane. It's, it's amazing. Well, all the bead work you see them doing, and I'm assuming that oh, some, there of, we go. Here's some of the bead work you see in the show is yeah, they just there went. We go. They just oh. went on. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. My my my. Just oh. Yeah, just, just and the it. thing is, you're like, oh, you see a kid running around in that. That's crazy. It's New Orleans. <laughs> and Mardi Gras. Coming. And people are like, <laughs> why does that kid got his Mardi Gras coke on? Because he worked hard on it and he wants to try it out. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, yeah. Last year. It's like time. saying, like, why is there a Spider-Man over by oh, in San Diego and around Comic Con time? Well, it must be that time of year again. You know, yeah. people aren't going to be freaked that out unless you. But because um, yeah, some of the bead where they show the bead work in the show, that mm-hmm. there's they just couple shots of it, and you know they actually went down there to people. They they didn't do that for the show. They just like went down to New Orleans. Like, can we photo you, film you doing yeah. bead work? Because <laughs> it <laughs> yeah. was like authentic bead work, and it was some it was uh, the. Uh, and then they, uh, all of this is interlaced with him and Ty, uh, him and Tandy having a conversation. Now, again, it's a little confusing whether it's they had one conversation or whether they're having multiple conversations over the course of several days while they live their life. Um, but uh, they do get into the imagery because they start talking about what they saw. Mm-hmm. And they figure out that he's, he's like, she's like, has that ever, you know, she talks about her powers. Has that ever happened to you? He goes, yeah, it's happened twice. Um, but I, I see their darkness, their their fears. And Sandy's like, I think I see their hope. And he's like, well, that's ironic because the girl without hope. And he's like, you have hope. <laughs> and uh, uh, they talk about the imagery and they actually explain, like, she, like, asks him what's up with the checks. Like, why do you have all the checks? He's like, what are you talking about? And she just explains the checks. And she says, I think that means that you are unwilling to accept the help that others offer you because you don't think you're worthy of it. And he's like, symbolism. He's like, whoa. She even says, I think it was like, uh, what do you, like a metaphor. And, he <laughs> and then later on, she's like talking about herself. He goes, you know, that little girl handing out roofies like their sacrament. And I was like, oh, roofies. Oh yeah, cause she roofies. She roofies the people she robs. Okay, so suppose that's what that was supposed to be about. But uh, she's like, yeah, that that's who I am. And they talk about that a little bit. And they also try to test their powers, the limits of their powers. And like, because every time they touch, they get blown across the room. Mm-hmm. So how close can we get? And she's like, so close your eyes and don't cheat. And they start getting closer and closer. And you can tell that they're feeling something and it feels good and they like it. And then they touch. <laughs> 
they don't just go flying across the room. <laughs> he bursts through a pew. Yeah. Like, if the walls of the church were not thick, heavy walls, he probably would have gone through the wall. So that was expl- that was like car collision explosion. Mm-hmm. And he's like, he's like laying there, Bailey, and the breathing goes, and he's like, it, it, it felt good up, up until. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was like, no, that was fine until it wasn't. And now I hurt. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be bruised. Uh. So, um, uh, so he's finding out about his dad. You know, he had no idea his dad led that le- had this other life. Mm-hmm. He's he's seen his. So this is kind of cool because he had a moment with his powers, seeing who his mom really was, and really connecting with her. Now he's connecting with his dad. In fact, later on they come in, and him and his dad are his dad's telling him stories from his childhood when he was a little criminal, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and they're laughing. And mom comes in, "What you talking about?" He's like, "Oh, nothing. No, nothing, no, nothing, no, nothing, no. nothing, nothing. We're just having a father son moment. We're just in there, dude. Yeah. Oh no. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, we're not talking about anything, honey. It's <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Have some pants. Would you like some pants? Yeah. You know. Yeah. I was just sitting up here in my sarong because my kilt. Was getting a little scratchy, so have some pants, though. Yeah, there you yeah. Go. <laughs> and then things start to fall apart. Uh, him and Tandy uh, get into it because she, they start talking about what we have. He's like, "What we have is survivor's guilt." At least that's what my priest says. And uh, they start talking about how uh, she says she goes, "Yeah, I wish I was the one who died." Mm-hmm. So when she went in the water, she wished she had died and her father had lived. And, you know, the brother doesn't say it, but he always wished he had died, not his older brother. And uh, they kind of get into it. And then they get into a fight because she says she talks about being suicidal. And he's like, why are you suicidal? And she's like, I have nothing. He's yeah. like, no, this was an interesting moment in the show for me. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, the whole yeah, time I'm, I'm thinking, thinking about killing myself and all that stuff. And it's that knee jerk thing. It's that usual thing of I'm thinking about killing myself. No, don't kill yourself and don't talk about it because it makes me uncomfortable and there's always a way and there's always a reason. And she calls him on it hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because they get into it. He's, he's like, he's like, you have everything. She's like, what are you talking? She's like, oh, I'm sorry. You have two living parents <laughs> who love you. And, he, and she's just like going off and he's like, he's like, check your privilege. And she's like, what? He's like, he lays out like, how he's like he goes you can walk into a room and then he says the things i'm the whole time thinking like oh so i i want to see solar's reaction to this because he goes he goes you can walk he goes he goes i'm a criminal or whatever but that's because you can be you walk in any room and that you you're you're you belong there you can steal and get away with it goes it goes every single person in the country is trying to kill me yeah (laughs) and you're like and he's basically he's going up he's like yeah like he barely survived. His brother literally died in front of him. He has a valid argument about that. Especially since his brother died while trying to do the right, right thing. thing. You know? And so and he gets he gets pissed off and he, he so and she's like, What are you talking about? Like like I've seen your hopes. I watched you commit suicide by cop over and over again. <laughs> if if anyone has a death wish, you do. And he's like no, he's like, <laughs> fine. He's like, you want to kill yourself? Then do it. In terms of walk off, and she's like, oh my gosh. They just—it's a very ugly fight, mm-hmm. and they both just cut each other as deep as they can. And you're kind of looking back at you—you—if you've ever had those nasty fights where you said things that you you know really. That was that was me. There's some things you can't take back. Yeah. And Matter of fact, let's take a bit of a look at it. Yeah. <laughs> What the? You don't get to tell me. That. And and oh man. Oh, here come the waterworks. Yeah, this is. He's like, what? This was a very hard. Mother, th- this fine, was, yeah. do it, do it, fine, yep. quick, I'm done. And then she just tears her man right now. Yeah. She's like, oh, you hurt you 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 you, you don't get to you don't <laughs> get to you hurt me and walk away. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was and the whole time I'm like, this is a really hard scene for me to watch. Well, yeah. So I fought for you. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah I want to hear what Solar is going to say about this because the, the, they they really do not pull the punches between the precinct and this scene. They're showing you just how bad things are, and you're like, that was rough. 
I told you this is hard. This is a this yeah. was especially yeah. this was an especially <laughs> hard show for me to watch. Yeah. So wow. this this one's a rough <laughs> one, and um, you know, like it's obvious. Know, it's ob- <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's obvious whoever wrote this has been there mm-hmm. because they don't pull the punches on. No, them. no, they don't, and they don't say the right things. They say all the wrong things that now, people say. One thing I I definitely noticed about this episode was when they split up, okay, mm. after they have that argument, they don't have a you see Timmy moment. They don't, I mean, the writers on this show are going, um, I've, I've talked about the two types of narratives, the two types of heroes there tends to be. Um, this is a Marvel show, and Marvel writers, excuse me, are really good at writing cathartic motivational heroes mm-hmm. in the sense of, Watching these heroes are supposed to be cathartic, which means they are like you. They act like you. The only difference between you and them are their powers, their circumstances, and they are actively doing something. Mm -hmm. But take away the powers and take away the villains or the evil corporation, and you know these two. Mm -hmm. And so when when they do their separation in this scene, you're right. They didn't say the right things. They didn't make up Quake. The first thing they did was to run right back to their standard safety mechanisms mm-hmm. um, that they do when they're traumatized, which is, um, you know, um, for Ty, it's physical activity. Yeah, he's doing. And for Tandy, it's drugs. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah he's doing, pu- he's doing uh, push-ups, you know, and, and she's, she's, you she's, know. she's trying to get high, and it's just not working, and she's getting angry about it. Yeah. And then um, I, yeah. You know. Um, so, uh, but, uh, and then she's uh, she goes to go check on the lawyer, mm-hmm. and um, she's she stops. She's she's in the vacant lot across the street. And again, this guy's in like a, a retail space, so you the lights are on, you can see everything. And she stops and is watching him like working on paperwork. And she's she's like taking a moment. And um, and he's like, a- as he's working on the paperwork, the uh, Sparklets uh, delivery person comes up. It's a oh, woman, okay. yeah, and he was... he waves he waves something like, oh yeah yeah, like uh, he's like, oh yeah, right. Out. You can see he's like, all right, just go ahead and change it out. And while he's working on it, she sees this Sparklets woman pulls out a uh, Glock and one shots him in the back of the head. Blood splattered all over the wall, and she's like. <gasps> What? And then she <laughs> takes the sparkless bottle, which apparently is full of kerosene, dumps it all over the legal paperwork he's working on, lights it on fire, and walks away. Yeah. And she's like, uh, <laughs> uh. This is what over your head looks like. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, just she thought, and again, so she just watched, she just had someone else in her life, the closest thing she's had to a surrogate father figure, the guy who generally wants to be her new daddy, die. Mm-hmm. In front of her, again. <laughs> she goes to her mom's house. Um, well, the reason I'm sorry, I, I lost sequence. She goes to talk to her mom after the big fight, and the mom's like, "You were right. He's li- he's like all the others because basically his ex wife called during dinner, and and sh- and mom and mom freaks out. I broke up with him, and she goes to talk to him. Maybe try to. And she's like, "Do I talk to him? Because he's a good guy. My mom's an idiot." He dies, so she goes back to the goes back to mom's house to talk to her, and he hears mom through the door going, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know how I get. I I don't know what I was saying. I got Why scared. Why don't you answer my calls? This like, is, yeah, this is the sixth message, but I really want us to get back together and try again. And she just breaks. She breaks and she sits on the floor and cries because she doesn't have the heart to tell her mom that he'll never get that message. Yeah, he he died. No, he never. He died not knowing she wanted him. And it was an interesting moment in the show for me because at that moment, like a lot of shows <coughs> like to use the trope of the child becoming the parent. Mm-hmm. Okay? And when the child becomes the parent, it's like, well, the child's the parent now, and that's that's the way it's going to have to be. On the burr, 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 burr. And I'm just kind of going, you know, that is a real thing. Let's see how they're going to handle it. And then, you know, watching the new good man, it's like, yeah, I'm married. I'm having a hell of a time trying to get her to sign the divorce papers, but I'm done. Mm-hmm. Um, and bond with the new father, and then she watches him die, and then she's got to tell her mom. Like, do I tell him? Uh, do I tell my mom that 
he was just assassinated probably because of the case that we're working on or do I let my mom think that he was the bad guy and she was right? Damn it. <laughs> there is no easy choice here. Yep. <clears throat> and she deals with it by not. <laughs> Rather than making that choice, she commits suicide. 16. Yeah. She goes to the lake that her father died in, wraps chain around her ankles, ties and her own like, hands. Well, we're looking at this whole scene, and it's just like, okay, so she went through all that stuff, and it's like, oh, yeah, rope. Well, uh, what? wait a minute. What the, huh? Are, are they playing Everybody Hurts from R.E.M.? <laughs> this is not the way that this, this scene is supposed to go. There's supposed to be some sort of catharsis. There's supposed to be something like that. Oh, come on, man. This is not cool. In the back moment, I'm like, how does she know to tie herself up? How does she know how to tie herself up? <laughs> you are a terrible man. You are just terrible. And, you know, and she's at that point, you're like, uh, is she actually going to do it? Is she going to Is she gonna teleport and save her? Nope. Nope. And she's just going in the water. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Yep. <laughs> that was the shortest. Show, that was the shortest season I've ever seen. No, it doesn't end there, folks. Um, surprise, surprise. There is a moment of tension, and then, well, Tandy doesn't come out of the lake. <laughs> Tagger comes out of the lake. I came back stronger, harder, moister, more right. surprised. Yep, and I have a glow stick. Yeah, and uh, so, uh, and, it, and we were talking about this off camera earlier, but I thought that that was a very, it was very symbolic because it is both, they, they, they addressed her survival guilt. They addressed how she wished she had died, and in the way she had died, the girl that she was died, and the, a different girl came out of that lake, a girl mm -hmm. without a father, a girl who hated herself. So she symbolically killed that girl in the lake and who came out was a third person who surprise surprise now has control of her powers <laughs> they are no longer she's because she's she's it's kind of a baptism kind of a resurrection kind of a weird re suicide rebirth thing right well there is a running theme of like they try to do the thing yeah they fail they talk to each other they fight they try again yeah and he, well, he told her, you have to stop running away. Yeah. And in a way, in a weird way, she's not running because she's confronting the thing that she's always been running from, which is right. what happened in the lake. Reliving it, only this time she saved herself. There's a lot of stuff you can unpack here. There's a lot of fun with that. So, yeah, and, yeah uh, guys in the chat can, can talk about that in more depth. But uh, now she can control her power. She goes back to the burned out uh, law, uh, law firm pauses for a moment, conjures forth the dagger at will, and uses it to slice into the safe like butter. And she gets his record, the important documents, because all the important stuff he kept in the safe. Right. <laughs> and she's like, okay, got it. Because what the assassin didn't do was check to see if he had actually a file, actually used the safe as a filing cabinet, because he didn't have a filing cabinet. <laughs> Like she just burned everything that was on the desk. Didn't bother to see if he had other copies elsewhere. So, right. so now she has the the, the critical information, and um, I think that's where we leave it. Yeah, right there. Boom. She can call it at will. Mm -hmm. And apparently, it is very powerful because it cuts through like a safe, a safe like butter. <clears throat> yeah. Although um, we have we have a moment with Ty, really going back and confronting the police because you know we talked about when oh yeah that's right because he, he goes he goes back to ty goes back to the precinct but he doesn't have a preset uh, uh pretext this time mm -hmm. he asks to speak to officer o'malley aka latte cop latte cop who we've established is the only honest cop in the entire precinct not exactly because we have seen her at this point in the show like doing drugs <laughs> and and you know doing um she's not a good cop she's just not as bad as the others yeah you know so yeah so all in all um what would you rate this episode ooh um i was actually thinking i was going to downrate it to maybe like 3 of a kind because 
while it while it expanded and explained on a lot of things and it really had a lot of character development one it's really hard to watch emotionally and two the weird we're having a conversation cutting to flashbacks and it i was very confused as to where the where what sequence was happening when when was it that like because she's having a conversation about using her powers and then they cut to a scene of her using her powers mm-hmm. was that does she does she use her powers after the conversation or is she relating how she used her powers which is which is alluding to what and I found that very confusing cinemagraphically okay so I was like mm, from just a like because up until like the first episode cinemagraphically was just mind blowing right this one the storytelling it was a little confusing and a little muddled. And I don't know if they were doing that on purpose, but I was like, it felt a little disjointed to me. So okay, I, I would have been nicer if they just had some a clearer way to explain to me, the uninformed, you know, observer, when were these things happening in relationship to each other? Okay, well, I will say, um, I'm with you on the three of a kind rating. I mm-hmm. really am. Um, the fact that it is difficult to watch <laughs> emotionally is one of the reasons I love it. Um, because you know me and drama. However, um, it does stand up to a second viewing. It's like a David Lynch movie in Mm -hmm. the sense of watch it again and it'll all make sense because the episode kind of starts chronologically with the argument. It's them talking in the church. And everything that happens happens after they leave the church. But all the stuff that you're watching happening during their talk in the church is – we're having a conversation like this, and this is how it's going to relate later. So and yeah, then we cut yeah. back to the thing, and it's like, this is how this part of the conversation relates. So it's all flash forwards. Yes, it's all flash forwards. And then af- directly after the fight, um, after their argument, and they walk away saying, go ahead, kill yourself. There's only like four minutes in the episode left, and it's like, oh, this is everything else that happened. Yeah. Okay, so – that's one of those things. But again, I didn't get it the first time I watched it either. Yeah. So, but... Um, I but guess it's a good episode if it holds up to a second viewing, though. It, it does. It's, 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 it's just there's a lot to unpack. There, uh, you're taking so much punch from <laughs> Oh, unpack. my God, like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, there, yeah. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess it's uh, my turn on this. Yep. So, um, I'm glad I got the thingy working again, because this, this has been... Uh, a little less than easy. Um, so, if you guys hear a, a ding-a-ding-dang, a ring-a-ding-thing happening on this, it's just because it's about time for me to get another computer. <laughs> um, which, I don't like saying that, but yeah, part way through the show, the the thing I used to check on MP City and all that stuff just went, nope, I don't like this episode, I'm leaving. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you take a look, MP City looks like nobody's talking anymore because y'all haven't said anything for a little bit, just saying. Um, but <clears throat> moving on to the devil, okay? Um, the devil of Ding. Now, in the last episode, there were a lot of things that happened. Matt reestablished contact with Foggy. Mm-hmm. Um, we found out that Matt was a little bit crazy having all these these hallucinations about the kingpin. Um, he's still living in the church basement. And Karen is actually showing to be a really competent character because she's like, oh, no, I'm investigating this fist thing. No, don't. We lost the character we borrowed from Spider-Man. And he's and she's like, yeah, and you think you're not going to lose me if I just keep my mouth shut? That ain't the way he works. So if I'm dead one way or another, I'm going to be investigating this because mm-hmm. we got issues. Um, well, in this episode is really interesting because it opens um it opens with um um who are we talking um we open with dexter we open with poindexter um kind of doing the whole you know stand up fish wall we're doing a whole bunch of things all this other stuff and kingpin is just going yeah well that's nice that's good to know that's good to know you know you're really good at your job agent poindexter let me just Palpatine my way into your head. <laughs> um, and then we cut to Foggy. Poor Foggy. Walking back and forth in his really nice apartment um, with his hundreds of thousands of dollars a year and his girlfriend who's really hot but we really weren't supposed to like her in season one. But 
it turns out she's actually pretty cool. It's just the part that you're not supposed to like about her is the lawyer part. <laughs> um, because as a lawyer, she's a monster. But when she's not being a lawyer, she's a hot blonde. So what do you want? Um, and Foggy's going, wait, my best friend comes back into my life and, and, and tells me he's never going to see me again. And he even has the line. Only I, Foggy Nelson, can be ghosted by a ghost. I mean, seriously. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, you know, he's re he's rapidly becoming my favorite character. Um, and it turns out Matt goes to his old apartment that Karen and Foggy have been keeping up the rent on because they don't want to believe he's dead. And I'm like, and, you know. Well, they were right. Yeah. I, I'm not saying I blame them. I'm just saying I don't blame them. <laughs> um so with that, you know, they, they pull that little piece of monkeying around and Matt goes to his apartment, pulls a suit off the thing, and it's like, okay, so what's going on here? He puts on his suit and we've got Matt Murdock, the lawyer, coming back. And he goes to the prison to see what was up with Fisk and why the Albanians decided to attack. You know, he's investigating the thing that got him transferred. And the, um, the guard is like, let me see your ID. And he's like, oh, I left in the car. Look, this is my, um, this is my, um, my bar identification number. I know it's not a photo ID, but it did take seven years and like $75,000 to get. So could we? And it was like, okay, yeah, yeah, what's, all right, fine, I'll take that. And what's your name? Franklin Nelson. And it's like, wait a minute. You pickpocketed your best friend and took his bar card so that you could go to... Oh, you are a jerk. You are a serious jerk. So Matt is just determined to prove that Kingpin set all this stuff up. Uh. Um, and, but he's also determined to stay underground. So um, not like that's going to bite him in the butt later. But, um, but we spend more time focusing on the cop. We spend more time focusing on the FBI agent who worked this whole fisk thing into operation by taking the information from the albanians i mean and the guy we initially felt sorry for until we found out he was a creepy stalker no 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 no. that's agent point oh, i'm Dexter. talking okay. the dude whose name i can't remember because i'm very very bad at middle eastern sounding names oh um, yeah okay okay and um and it's interesting because he's on the fisk case people hate fisk just hate him. They're like, nope, this is it. If I got to kill him myself, I will. And he has the talk with his wife. And it is, it is heart-wrenching. Just heart-wrenching. Because um, essentially, he's trying to be a good cop. He's trying to earn a raise. And, his, um, and the fact is, his poor kids are like, I don't know what to do. Um, trying to pull up that that scene here i'm not sure if we have sound but um i'm gonna see what we can do here so i'm just gonna put the subtitles on okay we don't have sound going to our things but it's like i'd love to see him bring him up well you're working and i don't want i don't want you to be late look late, late for what late for my sisters so you know sammy's gonna stay here for a couple of days and it's like why is you know he, he what, what's up and it's like my, our son can't sleep in his bed because he's scared for your life. And here it comes. Here comes the, you knew I was a cop. <laughs> you know, the, you knew I was a cop when we got married. He stays up all night waiting for you to come home. He's been watching the news. He's scared something is going to happen to you. And I'm just kind of going, um, I get it, but mm -hmm. it's a trope I don't like. Because mm, yeah. it's, it's one of those, you know I'm an FBI agent. Um, but this is this is one of those things where where it's a reasonable thing, but I see it in every single show or movie where the main character has um has um what is it? They have a hard, hard, hard time with their family because it's like their family is just now realizing that their job doesn't leave room for family. Yeah. You know, I saw it in the West Wing where it's like, you know, the president's chief of staff has his wife leave him because he's like, look, what I'm, I'm doing very, very important work that could affect the world. And she's like, is it more important than your family? And he's like, 
for these next four years? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. Yeah. yes. You know, and that, that married that, a divorce. You yeah, know? that 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 was the that's the gig. We talked <laughs> about this. Like I've been a political in I, I have been a political agent. I, I, I have been I my job has been politics and dealing with stuff having to do with the government that I can't talk about to anyone about for thirty five years. What did you think this was? And in this show, it's like, I hate to sound like Keanu Reeves, but I am an FBI agent. I can't come home and say, funny thing happened at the office, honey. You don't have the clearance. (laughs) (laughs) And it's like, but your son is afraid for you, and he doesn't know if you're going to come home alive. I was an FBI agent before you got pregnant. (laughs) You know, my life is in danger because it's the nature of my job. And please, you should have thought about this before we had kids. Yeah, because, it, you know, it, it's, a, it's an easy trope to use to build drama and tension in a character's life. And it does get overused a lot. Uh, it's just um, like the kids going, well, you were never around. And it's like, I was busy working the job to spoil you enough to say that I was never around. <laughs> it, it, it's, it, it's just, I, I think it's dumb at this point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we've got that happening, but of course, um, Matt finds out that there has been some stuff with the Albanian and agent Dexter is now being looked into because when we saw him in that awesome scene where he's like one shot, one kill, one shot, one kill, one shot, one kill, the FBI is kind of going, were you doing that in cold blood? (laughs) <laughs> like you know, you're uh, you're good. Don't get me wrong, you're you're damn good. But uh, yeah, um, yeah. Um, well, it's more along the lines of you killed nine people with a handgun, and mm-hmm. you never reloaded. it. Where they're like, how is that possible? The best marksman in the world couldn't have done what you did. Yeah. <laughs> so there's something weird yeah. about that. And he's like, not weird. Like, no, I'm just that good. I'm just that good. <laughs> no, we think your story doesn't pan out. Like, there had to be six other people there. Well, it turns out he is that good. Yeah. But there is something bad happening. Yes. So it's like one does not exclude the other. Um, but here's the interesting thing as far as, like, the plot point goes, okay? Um, Matt gets into prison and he talks to Jasper, okay? And Jasper is the dude that shanked the kingpin and got beat up and had and all that yeah. stuff way way back in the first episode, way way back. Okay, 3 episodes ago. <laughs> and um Matt finds out it's like, "No, man, this paid me to do that." And it's like, "Aha! I knew it. I knew it. I'm blind, but it but even I can see that that was just way too convenient." <laughs> you know. Wait, so Fisk paid him to shank him in the weight room so there'd be witnesses to the reprisal. Yes. Ah, TV is about to <laughs> It's, I give up information, I turn myself rat, then I make sure that I'm attacked for being a rat, but while I'm being a rat, I make it very clear that I've got way more cheese to show you, so now you have to take me out of here in order to catch all of my competition. <laughs> um, and then I put a hit out on myself and made sure the Albanians took it. It's starting to come together. <laughs> you know. And Matt's like, ha, ah, I knew it. Now I gotta find a way to prove oh damn it. <laughs> you know. And um and Karen is, you know, she's finishing her thing. But then Foggy decides to do something a little weird. Because in the previous episode, he went to the dude running for city council mm-hmm. and said, I've got a multi-million dollar law firm behind me, and you want to put Fisk back in a prison. How can we help? I only have a hundred million ways that I can help you, so how can my law firm and my resources help put him away? And the district attorney is like, dude, I... Yeah, the district attorney, not the city councilman, I'm sorry, is like, sorry, there's nothing we can do. This is federal. He's getting help from the U.S. government. They're above our clearance, so I, sorry, I, you can't do this on a district level. And Foggy is like, what? 
I came here offering you corporation help to put this dude away. And he was like, dude, no, you don't get it. I know you've got a hard on for this guy. I know you want him behind bars as much as I do, but I'm just a district attorney. I cannot beat the FBI. And Foggy's like, well, you lost my vote because I'm voting for myself. I'm going to run for district attorney as a write-in. Just to, and I'm running on one platform. I'm a one-issue candidate. And that issue is get that murderer out of that penthouse. <laughs> you know? And I'm going, you know, that's not a terrible idea. It's not. It's mm-hmm. really not a terrible idea. Because, um... Every, as you said, everyone hates him. They're protesting outside the building. He's generating a lot of bad press, a lot of bad feelings. And uh, so, he, Foggy has a shot. Yeah, Foggy has a shot. Um, and of course, you know, during the during the episode, Matt takes some injury because Daredevil gets beat up. He kicks a lot of butt, but he don't do so skate scathingly. Mm. So he goes to the ER, does a thing, and of course, you know, we've got the guy. <laughs> like, I'm now going to check your your pupils to make sure that you're not concussed. And it's like, just just give me the paperwork. I'm 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 just going to get out of here. Dude's like, yeah, whatever, man. I just work here. Let me just, uh, you know, yeah, if you come down with headaches in the next couple of days, just take this in the mouth. <laughs> and Matt's like, uh, no, no. You see, my superpower is I don't need eyes to see. So, of course, we get the fight, but he gets drugged. So, wait, <laughs> what What the what? the what? what just happened? Who was that guy? Why was he doing that? Kingpin. When you're a criminal mastermind, and this is the whole Kingpin superpower thing, um, he's got his fingers in every institution. and So he just had that guy waiting on standard orders that if a blind dude comes in? like Not if a blind dude comes in, but it's like, I know Matt Murdock is still alive. I know he's hunting for me. And let, let's see what he's up to. Uh, oh, okay. All right. Yeah, he went to the prison. Mm-hmm. He got this. He, he'll probably need some medical help. What can... Where would he go for medical help? Do I have people there? Because um, one of the big things about Kingpin, and of course, um, here we go, and of course, poor Matt is like, you know, um, Kingpin is connected everywhere, just everywhere, and that's his whole thing. Um, he's got people in the FBI. He's got people in the courts. He's got people on the street. He's like Tyler Durden in Fight Club. You know, and so of course we have that moment where he does the. Um, let's see if we can get some sound in here. I'm not sure if this is gonna work, so bear with me. But yeah, so you know the RN is like, I'm gonna drug you now and do that whole thing. And right after that happens, yeah, we get that moment of like, well, I just got past that dude, and why is the phone ringing? Like, like. Why I, I'm I'm blind I'm not I'm not there I got all the subtitles for you guys on SoundCloud but you know it's fist like you're not Franklin Nelson you're not Foggy <laughs> I had him there for Foggy <laughs> you know and he's like you know for a blind man you have very impressive reflexes Mr Murdoch you're watching me through the cameras well yeah what was I injected with do you remember the last time that we smoke we spoke during the Defenders. You know, you said the cost of postage, you could prevent my reunion with my girlfriend. <laughs> with the only person who gives my life meaning. The only person that I love. <laughs> ah, like, I, I would have let that go, man. I really would have let that go. <laughs> yeah, but, but you didn't threaten me. Say, th- say it. You threatened her. You threatened her. <laughs> And this is important. This is important because back in season one, he had a dude make a fool of him in front of this same woman, and he decapitated him with the door to an Escalade. (laughs) So (laughs) it's one of those things where it's like, if you're going to mess with Fisk, mess with Fisk all day. Wilson is like, you hit me in the face, that's part of doing business. But you threatened her. You embarrassed me in front of her. You touched her shoe. I swear, he will kill everything. It's interesting because most of the time that he does killing in this show is based on the women in his life. You know, he killed Ben Urich just for going to see his mama. (laughs) 
it was like, you went to see my mother. I can't let you survive that experience. You know, <laughs> you embarrassed me in front of in front of the girl that I want to be my girlfriend. I'm going to decapitate you with a freaking car door. And go, feel free to you guys can YouTube the clip. Um, it wasn't a clean decapitation. I think he slammed the door on the guy's head like 11 times <laughs> in the scene. It was, I'm going to bash your head in until it falls off. So, you know, and of course, since it is an episode of Daredevil, um, now we've got drugged Matt Murdock um, walking away from all that stuff. And it wouldn't be a Netflix show. It really wouldn't be a Netflix show unless we had a hallway fight. <laughs> we fight in hallways. Hey, I'm an orderly at a prison. We're in a hallway. Guess what's going to happen? Is this Netflix? Yeah. It ain't Girl Scout cookies, you know? <laughs> and again, we have another hallway fight. This show started it. It's got to have it in at least every other episode. Oh, okay. So that was, <laughs> that was the prison. Uh, yes, it was, it was the, the pr prison. That makes a little more sense because Fisk yeah. owns everyone in the prison. I was like, he's just like every hospital on tap? What the hell? No, no. no it was okay. in the prison. All know. right. That makes more sense. Yeah. And again, we get the hallway fight. And um, as we're why do people even take hallways in the Netflix universe? Like, why are you going out on the fire escape? It goes, I don't have time for a fight. What, what do you mean? There's <laughs> always a fight in the hallway. Yeah, I'd like to go to the elevator. Yeah, could I just have one put in my room? Why? Because every time I go into a hallway, there's a dude in red glasses or a big black guy <laughs> no. or a really hot skinny brunette. But somebody is going to I'm, I'm, I'm just picturing you go out there. There's a little old lady with groceries. Then it turns into kung fu fighting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, very last no. action hero. Yeah, it really is. It's <laughs> like, okay, like you know, to get out of this part of the Wizard's Tower, there are no hallways. It's just all open spaces. The Wizard's Tower actually consists of a bunch of cargo containers in a field because of Netflix. So take that. You know, I'm kidding. That's what we're trying to upgrade to. <laughs> um, so yeah. So all in all, those are the really important plot points. And as far as the things go, with focusing on. Focusing on the FBI agent, mm -hmm. you're just watching him make compromise after compromise after compromise, and every episode he loses something else. And it's like, hmm, is this how corruption happens? I'm not sure. It's not a single choice. It's a series of small yes. little deaths. Yes, I call it death by inches or aggregate um, because it very much is a matter of, of – it really is a matter of every one decision you make is a one decision. That's great. But 50 decisions later, next thing you know, you're Mike from Breaking Bad. I mean, <laughs> it's just one thing after another. So, um, yeah, uh, that is and, – and that's the crux of the episode. Now, the only reason I don't go into as much detail as he does is because I don't want to keep you guys here for hours and hours and hours. Um, but all in all, this episode was still um, three of a kind. Um, this season so far is a very slow burn, but it's setting up a lot of pieces because um, I'm appreciating the show overall because it's really showing how a criminal mastermind works. Mm -hmm. You know, it's showing like, you know, you and I are both old school, so we know Gene Hackman going, greatest criminal mastermind there is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, and then we see like Batman villains where I'm a criminal mastermind. Are you? Yes. Now look at my jack-in-the-box type puzzles and my penguins with rocket packs on them because I'm a criminal mastermind. And it's like, okay, all right, I, I can see where you're going with that. Um, the last time we saw something like that was The Dark Knight mm -hmm. in that opening scene, the opening bank robbing scene. Um, I tell people that all the time, like, well, how would the Joker do all this stuff? And, and and how did he have that line in the air to take down the helicopter during the scene with the flipping truck? And it's like he put it there at the beginning of the movie. They used it as a zip line. Um, he's escaping. Batman's chasing him. If you're being chased, you determine the route. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's like, okay, yeah, we, yeah. See a, we see a mastermind at work. It's like, oh, yeah, there's that zip line still there. Let's use it. Yeah. Did they take it down? Doubtful. This is Gotham. There's water. Cool. Hey, it's still there. That was fun, you know. Um, and with the kingpin, it's showing. Oh, when I left the prison, I owned it, and they showed that. They showed that pretty much by the end of the first season. 
that he owned the prison. And so everything that happened and in the prison was orchestrated. It was just theater orchestrated for the FBI. And they even showed that in the Punisher, in the Netflix Punisher series, because Frank Castle, or it might have been Daredevil season two. It was Daredevil season two. The Punisher got arrested. He went to jail. He fought with the Kingpin. The Kingpin beat him and said, I like your potential. I'm in here because I'm doing my time because I'm working at something bigger. But you, I need a man like you out there. And the Punisher's like, what, so I can kill every single piece of criminal scum out there, including your competition? Yes, actually. So I'm going to orchestrate your, your prison escape, and you just go out there and be you, buddy. You just, you do you. Let me, let me get you out of this prison and you do you. And that was back at season two, mm-hmm. you know. And so it really showed how Fisk owned the place. So when, um, <clears throat> when Matt went to the prison to talk to the dude to find out about the shanking, he was talking to him in the infirmary. And then, yeah, Kingpin is like, oh, no, I still own the prison. Let's kill that guy. And, oh, I thought it was actually Foggy Nelson who I had the prison keep an eye on because if Foggy, Karen, or Matt shows up to that prison, it's only going to be for one reason. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, he got the call. Hey, Foggy Nelson's here. Cool. Turn on the camera. Oh, that's not Foggy. <laughs> that's not Foggy. Look at that. Oh, no. This is better. This is this is my blind friend. My blind friend with amazing reflexes. <laughs> you know, you, and, and again, that was still very much, very much the, I'm a criminal mastermind. I, training day. That's really what it is. And that's what this episode really shows. That moment where, um, I forgot his name, and he is like the actor's actor who takes roles because he likes them. In Training Day, looking over at Denzel Washington, like, you've been planning this all day. And Fisk is like, man, I've been planning this all week. <laughs> I knew you were coming. <laughs> I knew I knew exactly what I had to do, so we set up everything. And um, all in all, I mean, it was a good episode, but this is one of those those episodes, like the three that preceded it, that's building towards something big. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if Daredevil Season 3 is going to have a big finale, but I know that it's a slow burn with a lot of thickness in it. It's a lot like The Magicians in that sense. Mm-hmm. So it, it is a three of a kind. Um, the funny thing is it keeps – it's a solid three of a kind because it becomes more exciting the more I talk about it than it was when I was watching it. Mm. And I think that's because there was so much to take in. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so let us know what you guys think. Um, this is pretty much our time. Um, I had a couple of meetings this week and I was thinking about extending our show times to two hours and people are like, no, that's too much time to listen to a podcast or to keep one on in the background. And I'm like, all right, fine. So I'll be, I'll just be doing that thing. Um, (coughs) so I can deal with that, I suppose. Um, so that's what I'll be doing on on that sense. Um, I'm just keeping it as our half hour, and hopefully, hopefully that'll be our, our our 90 minute mark. Because you know, since I hear that I'm pushing it with you guys, <laughs> and that makes you know that makes our half hour now. Let's see how we get this this little doohickey working here. Look at hey, look at that. It's yeah. Well, it says hang on, I'm plugged in. And um, hopefully this thing will work. Um, but, um, you know, thank you for showing up. Well, thank in you. In the way that you show up every week. Um, yeah, we're starting to do this. Again, the archive is so thick. So, so thick. Um, and um, so it's it's being a thing. It's being a thing. Um, so let's see here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, no, no. no. Um, ah. Man, just one of those things. Like I said, I'm doing the best I can here. Um, boop, 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 spatial sound. Nope, 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 nope. Sound settings. Just trying to get this thing going so I can play the... the okay. Output device. Speakers. Shoot. Input device. Troubleshoot. Yeah, I need to troubleshoot that whole thing. But yeah. Um, so yeah, we've got a lot of stuff that's coming, man. I think... I think my sound interface thing here just burned out. I think that's what the problem is. Um, so that's where we're at on that. 
So unfortunately, let me see what I can do over here so we can get our end credits going. I'm sorry, you guys. I didn't plan on this stuff actually being a thing. So, <laughs> oh, don't worry. I'll fix this in post. Uh, we're streaming live. We're doing live. Oh. Okay, that is a thing. So, let me see if I can get this thing going. Windows. Play Chrome. Ah, there we are. Now we're on. Yep. Okay. Hey, look at that. And peek a doo, transform. Um, peek a doo. Okay, so is this the thing? All right. So let's take a look here. So what I'm going to do here is. Yeah, hopefully that's working. So let's uh do. Let's take a look here. I'm not sure if it's showing, so we're going to do that, but it's okay because you can hear us and since you can hear us, I'm going to say um feel free to contact us at back in the deck at gmail.com. You can also um, you can also check out our YouTube thing. Again, we're always trying to find ways to make it work, but like I said, by tomorrow the Patreon will be up and you guys can help us get the equipment that we need and spread the word to your friends and all that stuff. Check us out on YouTube. Um, just look for <coughs> BID um, space P on YouTube and you'll be able to check out our stuff there. Follow us at Twitter at back in the deck dot at you know Twitter at back in the deck. That's B A C K I N T H E D E C K, and join Deckers on the book to talk to us about a whole bunch of other stuff. That's a Facebook group where everybody is free and easy. Um, <coughs> listen to our audio archive over on SoundCloud. That's at SoundCloud slash B I D underscore P. Check out our Instagram. Um, that's at back in the deck or at Bid P. Just look for all of us there. And I want to say, hey, man, um, thank you guys for being patient with us. Like I said, today is a day of technical difficulty, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> it's just, man, such such technical difficulties. But you know what? Um, we've made it through. So I'm going to say thank you mm -hmm. for showing up. Thank you. Oh, I wasn't, I wasn't talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I was talking to the people over in MP City. Hey, how's it going? Especially our cheerleaders over there. Um, and of course, you know, thank you for showing up, mm -hmm. Mr. Henchman, you know, because you are my number one a guy, <sighs> you know, yes. and, um, but with that, I'm going to say, um, if just in case, just, just, just in case anybody tells you that you can't have the hobbies that you like based on the circumstances of your birth. Your race, religion, creed, gender identity, sexual preference, your budget, or anything else, you just tell them that we said, take those cards and put them back in the deck. This is Solar Gray, the Cinematic Sorcerer, and thank you guys for joining us this week on Bust a Recap. I will catch you guys later. Night, everybody. <laughs>